Okay, I think we have enough to start going. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Core Implementations Weekly Sync, February 10th. Um, we are recording. Okay. Uh, well, first up, actually, um, we can say hi to Will, who is here. Uh, he's joining the, uh, the IPFS team. So this is specifically the content writing team. Hi, great to be here. Excited to join. Excited to have you. Hi. <clears throat> okay, and I think that's the only new face today. Should we uh, should we sing a song like we do in the IPFS meeting? What song? <laughs> Molly is hot here. Molly is hot here. We can skip. No. <laughs> Uh, then let's start going through the high priority initiatives. Okay, first up, upcoming ship releases, Alan. Yeah, uh, just a quick mention that uh, since we last spoke, two release candidates for JSIBFS have been now been released. Uh, there is a blog post with all of the release notes. Uh, you are welcome to have a read through and review it. That would be cool. Um, and if everything goes to plan, as in there's no more show-stopping bugs that crop up, uh, it will be released by the end of the week. So, uh, should this be an RC two? It starts at zero. Oh, okay. D due to our tooling. Fancy computer science people. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, upgrade testing <coughs> infra. Anton, you probably have some some updates here. Yeah, maybe we're all easier. Um, I don't see rules, so yeah, I'll give a short update. So version 0 0.1 has been um, released uh, last week. Um, a few people are already testing it. We already solved a few bugs with it. Uh, and on master, there are already a few improvements. And we'll be um, doing some planning for version 0 0.2 probably tomorrow. Uh, and this should probably land next week at some point. So yeah, a lot, a lot of small incremental improvements. That's pretty much it. You are muted, Stephen. Stephen, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, moving on to contract routing, sign peer records. Uh, I don't know who put this in here. It was me. Okay. Yeah, so uh, signed peer records should be landing. Uh, Raul is hoping today. I'm betting that will probably be tomorrow. Uh, but today or tomorrow, we should have that. Um, the not joining a DHT one behind an app, that work is pretty much, should mostly be the way there. I think we're waiting on one PR uh, to finish that up. And um, with that, we're starting to kick off work on the disassociating routing table membership from Connection State. Um, there is some discussion happening around that that we should try to nail down soon. Um, so if we can't uh, talk about that later today, maybe we can talk about that on libp2p or tomorrow um, at the test ground content writing meeting. Um, and then, yeah, I think the big thing is the work uh, Adin's doing on disjoint paths and terminating query improvements. Um, and obstacles there with test ground. Eddie, I don't know if you want to give an update on, on where you're at with that. Uh, yeah, so we're running tests. The tests are looking good, especially when you have high numbers of undialable nodes. The, uh, the new DHT code is looking much better than before. Um, but I can't really give solid numbers because I want to see how this thing works as the number of nodes scale out. I don't want to give people uh, no false hope until until I have more concrete evidence. But um, it, is, it is looking much faster. So there is hope. Did we get over the obstacles that we were having with the uh, uh, testing? Uh, I mean, sort of. It, the obstacles we got, we got over the obstacles mostly of running the tests. Uh, we need to know. However, in order to scale them fast, to scale them to more nodes and not have me wait like three hours per test, uh, we need. I needed to do the simultaneous connect 
solution, which uh, has allowed me to start doing that. Um, we will see if I run into more issues, you know, and as the journey continues. Okay. Uh, thank you for this. Yeah, it'll be nice to get that sound please connect bug fixed, or at least improved. Um, okay. Uh, gateway subdomain idle. I see not it. Yeah. So good news is that we got uh, grateful support for peer IDs as CIDs. Uh, and it, it not only works in subdomains. In subdomains, we redirect, we fix a uh, multi-codec and redirect to uh, the proper subdomain or path. Uh, I also fix it in the command line because it was like the similar code path. Um, and uh, and the rest was uh, mostly writing tests. And uh, we got a pretty good test coverage for CIDs and peer IDs. Uh, however, what remains are proxy modes and uh, DNS link itself and the DNS link I had called with Steven it will be kind of a challenge to test it in a way that does, does not uh, require connection to the upstream DNS system uh, but that's my goal to have like it self-contained ideally um, and that's probably the only remaining work before the PR is ready for a review I just don't want to make it uh, on I will keep it uh, as a draft uh, until we got like the full test coverage, and that's about about it. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this uh, one, oh, sorry. 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 The final thing is that uh, we, as a part of this work, we had uh, support for uh, HTTP proxy. So basically, the gateway port would also could act as a proxy that would solve. Uh, problem of like local host domains not being supported on every platform and also like uh, enable us to uh, ship a tighter integration maybe with some browser browser vendors and as a part of that work I realized there are more like there are two proxy modes so we support them both but we need to like test both of them so that will be a bit more work but doable. Alan? Alan. What kind of platforms don't support local host domains? Is it many or few? Subdomains. Subdomains, yeah. yes. Yeah. Sorry, that's local what I mean. subdomain, Yeah, local host subdomains. Basically, uh, as far as I know, uh, Linux distributions uh, with like uh, custom local configuration of DNS, like local DNS caching proxy. It depends on distribution, uh, but that's about it. Yeah, really, it depends. Yeah, they're the only ones that don't. Did you say? Sorry, didn't catch it. Yeah, as far as, far okay. as I know. Yeah, but we we basically we don't want to like hard code for this specific uh, uh, environment. Do this. We will have like dynamic tests. Are subdomains supported? Like in IPFS compiler, for example. If they are, fine. If not, we set up HTTP proxy, and it will still work. And no user configuration should be necessary. Well, actually, the, the HTTP proxy is nice as well because that means we can use DNS.link. So, like, um, we can forward HTTP quantum slash whatever dot DNS.link uh, through the proxy. So, the user will never even see local host in that case. They'll just see this nice domain in theory. Yeah, it's in theory. Problem are HTTPS. HSTS. If, <laughs> if the user already loaded that from HTTPS, uh, then there would be an error. But I think. That's a for a separate discussion. Yeah. Yeah, really, we need a man in the middle link proc or uh, yeah, proxy the man in the middle. Which we could, no, we can't even do that with HSTS. Maybe we could, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fun. Okay. Um, next up, uh, it's what updates, Dirk. Yes. Uh, so this week I've been working on some new test plans and test ground. So one is uh, seed selection, which means that uh, we need to verify BitSwap always chooses or favors the lowest latency peers when downloading stuff. Uh, one is fuzz testing, um, just making sure that when we put BitSwap under pressure that it uh, does the right thing. And out of that, we're also going to do some profiling. And the last one is version compatibility, which is making sure that the new BitSwap uh, and the old BitSwap can talk to each other. Uh, and then I also have been working with Stephen on some timeout management issues. Um, what to do, like how to simulate 
some of the new message types using timeouts and also what to do when we get a timeout when we're talking to a peer. Awesome. Um, okay, one more initiative, uh, stream content-based chunking research. Yes, uh, so a couple more setbacks took place after I spoke to uh, more to Eric and with Steven uh, on uh, how certain things are done in this, uh, in this tool. Uh, progress is going really well. Uh, I actually updated the issue that is tracking this with, uh, with the new sub, uh, subtasks that what we are doing to get this to version 0 0.1, so to speak. Um, and uh, looking really likely that I will be able to demo this live uh, during team week uh, to anyone who is interested. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, what I've been doing. Uh, now you can hear me. I don't know if I have any updates here. Uh, well, on the migration, there is an update. I don't see Hector, but yeah, he's been working on that. Um, we're getting closer. Uh, unfortunately, it's tricky because we're trying to support a reverse migration. Um, and in reverse migration, basically, like, we'll migrate, and then because of how we're like now going to be storing blocks, we're going to not store the codecs for the blocks that we're storing. Um, so when we do the reverse migration, we realize we actually have to look at the pin set and say, okay, what is pin? Traverse the pin set, look at the CIDs we're using in the pin set, and then like infer the right codecs for these blocks based on those CIDs. Um, and it's nasty and unfortunate. But we do want to support reverting because unfortunately like we do want to add this uh, change to uh, 0.5.0 or concept 0 0.5.0, which would have a ton of other changes, which will all be wonderful changes but could, you know, cause problems for users. So we want users to be able to downgrade, um, which starts to be like, maybe this won't get stuck into 0 0.5.0. I really want it to happen, but if it doesn't, oh well, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, uh, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, at least, we're getting it done finally. So it'll be there. Um, okay. That covers all of the initiatives. Anyone have any design review proposals? Anything we want to review, uh, sorry, for real, for context, uh, design review proposals are like, really any issues that you want reviewed by a group of people. Um, what you do here is you say, hey, here's my issue. Here's the proposal that I want to talk through. Uh, whoever's interested, tag it, leave your name, and then it's up to you to schedule the actual meeting so people can talk about this. We found this helps reduce uh, like synchronous, or sorry, uh, asynchronous uh, round trips. Or like if you have like a long discussion over GitHub, like this could take ages. If you have a quick discussion via a meeting, you can just work through the meeting or all the issues really quickly, come back to GitHub and post the results. So just makes sense. That's what this one is. Um, I don't see anyone raising their hands, so no. Uh, blockers asks, anyone need to think anyone else about something? Okay, questions. Anyone have any questions? Anyone have any random things I want to? Oh yes, Lytle. Um, I I got a, like ad hoc question about uh, talks, uh, like uh, so, uh, both um, um, when we were creating um, the RPC API for like the command line client, and there was like a decision to use the HTTP for that. Uh, were there any uh, this, like? hard blockers for using uh, unique sockets or something like that? For, oh, uh, we intentionally used, so you're talking about the, the, the HTTP proxy over the PP streams? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, like for, for the command line client, the IPFS mm -hmm. command, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's like talking over HTTP. Uh, yes. Was there like a plan for uh, supporting uh, Unix uh, sockets? Yes, this is actually in master at the moment. Oh, so that's work in progress. Awesome. Uh, at least I think it's master. Yeah, it should it should work. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's um, that was always the plan. Um, we had a bunch of to dos like extracting various things, and those are all fixed. So yes, I believe now we have support for this. Um, yeah, okay. it's still using HTTP, but 
Yeah, it's like planned for 0.5 or? Yes, yeah. Okay, and check it. Yeah, basically, like you'll, uh, when you start the daemon, you will specify a Unix instant address instead of, H, instead of like a, a TCP instant address. Yeah, and it'll just work in theory. Where did you get to with the logging update, Stephen? Uh, that um, I am currently working on GoLog, uh, trying to port some of the features we had in the old GoLogs so that we can actually like mirror our outputs to multiple sources and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to merge uh, your PR so we can get test passing uh, to go test because yeah, like this is going to turn into a, a thing. Um, yeah. Although actually at this point, I think we can. We could also just go directly into GoLibTV swarm and add the right logging output to the swarm, um, but then we need to like set the right uh, what's it called um, like log levels for the right messages. So your solution is probably the simplest for now. What is it? Uh, I just want to to know how many pair IDs the bootstrappers and the gateways and the preload nodes connect to over time. But if we were to set the log level that would give us that right now, it would probably be way more log information that we need from all the IPFS inputs. So uh, a tiny plugin to go IPFS that just logs unique peer, uh, peer IDs connected and disconnected. Yeah, and what I'm trying to do is make it so that globally you can say, okay, I want like this subsystem to have this log level and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I'm trying to do this the right way. And like, we found a way to do it um, where like we can create like multiple, like. We can have like loggers that feed into other loggers, and actually Zap has this thing called the increased level logger uh, that takes a logger and then incre like increases the minimum level. Um, so we would set set up one of those for every single one of our like subsystems, and then the like, command line when you tell it okay, accept this level for the subs. Or basically, the base logger would have a, a level debug, and all the subsystems would have a level like error. But then you could like decrease that level for a specific um, subsystem, uh, and then that subsystem would now start logging. Uh, the problem with this, like this is a global thing, what I would like to do ideally would be to have some way to like create, like subscribe to different levels and different HTTP streams, stuff like that. Um, uh, so I have been looking into that. That may be overkill. We may just say, well, let's make that the next feature. Um, but I think I can do this because like that has all, like, we'll need to put a custom core to make this work, but whatever. I don't need to get into the details. But yeah, we're trying to make logging pretty and nice. Um, the, the motivation was currently the only metrics we have for general size estimated like subjective view of size of ipfs network was by dht activity and then we told charity engine to stop being dht servers and start being dht clients so the perceived size of the network just went down by like <laughs> hundred thousand <laughs> nodes um, whereas we could get a pretty good idea of size network just on unique pair IDs that connect to our infrastructure. So we want to capture that information. On the other hand, if you've tried using the DHT recently, you'll, you'll have noticed that it's a lot faster. Um, uh, yeah, you can actually like find content and have content and things are kind of working. Um, the issue here is that like a lot of charity notes are behind NAT that we couldn't pass through. Um, now the DHT fix is the right solution for this. Uh, where the nodes will actually decide whether or not they should be in the DHT, but uh, also if you know who's running all those old nodes running go uh, 0.4.14, please tell them to upgrade. Um, that's a very old release. That may be our bootstrap nodes. Uh, I don't think so. There's like a hundred of them. No, a hundred. Sorry, it's like a it's like 4K of them. That's not our bootstrap node. Adeen. Uh, so two questions. One, um, given uh, that we now have a plugin that can like log out peer IDs, uh, can it also log out the latencies of those peer IDs? Yes. Uh, so like th that is something we could add to the plugin. Um, yeah, like the right way to do this would be like all the points where we get this information, log it, um, because we actually have a wonderful point where we can get this information. Uh, it's not here, um, uh, but we can prob well, actually, no. I don't know if we can log latency at this point. 
Because you may not have access to the metrics thing from the well, from the. We have access, but the only real like so okay, what we could do is we could ping the peer, or we could say when we connect, we just run ping and find it, um, like in action note. So what we can do is we can look at the connection and say, do we currently have latency? The problem is when we initially connect, we probably won't have that latency yet, uh, because like we only get the latency when it's recorded. And it's recorded from ping and from the DHT. Um, uh, so if we don't have it yet, we won't have it. Um, yeah, so I, ideally we'd also- we, we could log it on disconnect. Uh, yes, you're right, yes, on disconnect, yeah, we could log it. That's actually probably the way of doing it. Okay. That's, um, th that we may not have it though, but we'll see. Yeah, the, the other one was, uh, are the signed, the signed peer records, are those just for peer records or will we also be able to use those as like, Signed provider records. Um, no, those are just peer records. Those are not provider records. We have not fixed the provider record issue. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, for provider records, I think we need to make a switch to uh, ED25519. Okay, so for context here, we're currently using RSA as our default key type, and our keys are four kilobytes, uh, or sorry, uh, four kilobits. So not quite that bad, but still massive. Uh, so if we decide to do sign provider records with RSA, we are now going to be announcing these massive signatures. We could, <laughs> we'll have four kilobits of a key, four kilobits of signature, plus like the tiny little actual like uh, provider record. Um, and that's just a lot of data to store. Um, uh, if we switch to easy 5.9, then it's 32 bytes of key, of, um, key 32 bytes of signature. And actually we need to have the key because now like if the key's in light of the PRD. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, we'll probably have to switch the default. Uh, we could maybe try to sneak it into 0 0.5.0, but at this point it's so massive already that I'm like a bit scared. Uh, we also need to make sure that like all of the different implementations um, that I, like understand the inlining um, and do the inlining correctly and do the same thing that everyone else does. Otherwise, bad things happen. Don't be scared. It's been the most tested release ever. It's also probably the, actually no, it's not the most massive. I think 0.4.0 was the most massive, but I'm not sure. Actually, no, this might be the most massive. Most massive. Yes, the massivest. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Well, uh, then I'm going to call the meeting. Uh, could Alan, who I believe is recording this, upload the recordings? Uh, maybe cut off the beginning where we just sat there chatting and taking notes. Um, uh, that's it. Please remember to add your async updates and we'll be on the notes. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.